Okay. The next two poets are from here in South Carolina, Grace Beecham Freeman, born in 1916. She was a poet, columnist, short story writer, and educator from Spartanburg. She wrote a column at our house from 1954 to 1964 and was named by the governor as the fourth South Carolina Poet Laureate. Freeman's poetry career started when she had a poem published in a school literary journal named The Scribbler. And while in college, she edited the student magazine. Benny Lee Sinclair, born a little later on, 1939. She was a poet, novelist, and short story writer from Greenville. She was the fifth South Carolina Poet Laureate. Sinclair's talents exhibited early as one of her poems was published in a National Teacher's Journal, submitted by her first grade teacher. Beth Hardidge, who is one of our Greenwood County Diversity members, a new one, is going to read these poems by these two women. She's a native of Columbia, but spent most of her life in the Atlanta area. She moved to Greenwood five years ago. Beth is a member of First Baptist Church, and she has a grown daughter who lives in Georgia. Beth is a retired IRS revenue agent and a stay-at-home mom. She loves creating. She paints, knits, she does home decor projects. She plays the piano. She sings in her church's festival chorale. Beth loves to read and appreciates poetry, but does not write it. I met Beth at the um, Emerald Bells. She also plays the handbells, but we haven't been able to play lately because of COVID. So Beth, I'm gonna invite you to un, um, mute yourself and read first The Rope by Grace Freeman. Thank you, Nikki. I should also mention I have a son in Georgia, too. I wouldn't want him to feel left out. <laughs> the Rope. In the warm of spring and the easy bartering of the 30s, we sometimes asked Callie, who was our age, but black, to play jump rope on our piece of walk. Do not infer children were colorblind back then or kind. The rope belonged to her. Weekend lynching in St. John's Alley put a quick end to our shared game. The next Friday, when Callie came by on her way home from school, she walked on the other side of the street and no one asked where her jump rope was. That is powerful. It, uh, <laughs> That it symbolism is. of the rope. It is, it is. Uh, we're gonna, we're gonna move rope. on to the next poem, which is also a very deep and powerful one, and then we can have a little discussion, okay? A drowning song. This is by Benny Lee Sinclair, and um, I'm gonna read the news bulletin that preceded it in her book, because it reminded me very much of more recent um, happenings. News Bulletin, Fountain Inn, South Carolina, August 29th, 1974. Two small children drowned today when the car in which they were passengers rolled into a lake in front of their home. Their mother said she had left them alone for only a moment when the accident happened. A drowning song. In her grief, Isadora attempted to choreograph the quicksilver trace of water all that she had left of her drowned children. This woman moves in a similar daze, as whatever the grappling hooks catch, she rejects. Not her son or daughter, they wait down on the lake floor. Faces pressed close to the window, they are counting now, as she taught them, little fishes against their fears. Some evening in high water, they'll float home, so many towels and combs it will take. She busies herself with the housewife's inventory. Such wishes are merely her prayers. Tears help raise the water. Mercy. Thank you, Beth. Thank you. I know these are two, two hard poems. We've had happy poems. We've had whimsical poems and Sometimes we really do need to talk about the harder things in life. Hmm. Wow. <laughs> and 
Ellen says she has to leave. Thank you for being here. Nikki, go back to the to the one by Benny Lynn, Lee Sinclair. Yes. I I think it's so interesting how she um mentions Isadora choreographing in the first verse, which brings to mind Isadora Duncan. Yes. The, great dancer mm -hmm. and um if you've ever seen photograph uh, not photographs videos of her dancing it is like a quick silver trace of water you know she she used that um i don't even know what i'm trying to say but the <laughs> the choreography and then the comparison to the woman moving in a similar days. I, I, wow. Mm -hmm, Both mm -hmm. of those poems are just incredible. They but are. I, really I did a little. Love sorry. that. I did a little research on Isadora Duncan, and they say she had this um, style called evolutionary dance motion. Right. Um, and in this style, each movement is born from the one that preceded it. And that's what makes it like a trace, you know, quicksilver. Uh -huh. Each movement gives rise to the next in organic succession. So. Benny Lee Sinclair was a friend of mine uh, when I lived in Charleston. Wow. Uh, she was um, often... Uh, a guest at the um, Poetry Society of South Carolina, of which I was a member, and she she came quite often to the meetings, and uh, she was just one of the most incredible poets and such a lovely person. I, I miss her a lot. Uh, along those same lines, I think what impresses me about the poets we've had today, and particularly our local poets, is their willingness to share their talent with us. I first met Selma when she came to our church to hear Queen Quet of the Gullah Geechee Nation. And I didn't know Selma, we got to talking and she said she was a poet. So I invited her to come back and she spoke for our Catholic Women's Club. And they were just blown away. She did the poem that has been mentioned about the stained glass window. She also mm -hmm. did the one about the pews she read today. Mm -hmm. But uh, And she happened to bring some friends with her that were in a praise group. And one of the women there at our meeting, she when she found out that they were in a praise group, she said, well, would they sing for us? And mm -hmm. we were so taken. They just got up and swept us away with the song and they did it with no planning no they didn't know we were going to ask them if they would sing and I, I think that graciousness of sharing your talent is yes. just unbelievable yes yes Nikki it's Janice yes, yes Janice um, the uh first poem that Beth read of uh -huh. the rope is it the rope mm -hmm. yes the rope Okay. Yes, the rope. Uh, do you think that implies that the little girl's rope was used to hang the person or just, just that maybe her parents didn't want her to play with it anymore since it symbolized death for her? I think it's the latter. And it could be also that, um, you know, that she didn't want to play with the rope anymore after that. I don't know what her parents would have told her after that event. Um, yeah. I think it was a symbol, that rope being such a symbol of what had happened. And that's what it's, what first united them. Yes. Then yes. tore them apart. Yes. I like okay. it. I like that point. Thank you. I think we're going to move on. It's a little bit after three. We were trying to finish by three o'clock. So let's go to the next poet. Uh, first, we'll have another quote by Maya Angelou. And so will read it for us. 
Courage is the most important of all the virtues because without courage, you can't practice any other virtue consistently. You can practice any virtue erratically, but nothing consistently without courage. Amen, amen. Yes. And two courageous women here. Each with their own style. Beautiful, beautiful. 